Hi, my name is Trisha Henley. I'm a physical therapist and clinical applications manager for the Rojo Group. I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Isoflow memory control for positioning with the Quattro Select cushions. The Quattro Select cushions are divided into four quadrants, or chambers, that allow you to control the arrangement of the air within the cushion. The Isoflow memory control on the front center of the cushion is what allows this. When the Isoflow is unlocked, the green knob pushed in, the air is able to communicate with all the cells of the entire cushion. In essence, it is functioning like a single valve Rojo cushion. When you lock the isoflow by pushing the red knob in, the air is then locked into the four quadrants. This means that the air in each quadrant is only able to travel within the few cells of the quadrant. The air no longer travels from left to right or front to back with client movements. Because the air is no longer traveling through the entire cushion, there is inherently more stability in the cushion and less air fluctuation. You can use the isoflow memory control to correct or accommodate a pelvic deformity. Let's first talk about the proper inflation using the isoflow memory control. Then I will demonstrate how to affect someone's position using the cushion. The first thing we must do is properly inflate the cushion. I will now review proper inflation. First, start by placing the select cushion on the wheelchair, making sure it is centered with air cells up and the isoflow memory control facing forward. Consult your prescriber about alternate positions of isoflow. Next, turn the air valve counterclockwise to open. Make sure the isoflow memory control is also open by pushing the isoflow's green knob to the right or unlocked. Slide the pump's rubber nozzle over the air valve and inflate the cushion until it begins to slightly arch upward. Air will travel to the closest quadrant first, then pass through the isoflow valve to inflate the other quadrants. This is why the first quadrant looks overinflated when you start the inflation process. Pinch the pump's nozzle and turn the air valve clockwise to close. Then you can remove the pump. Have the individual sit in the wheelchair, making sure the cushion is centered underneath. The individual should be seated in their normal sitting position. Next, slide your hand between the cushion surface and the individual's bottom. Lift their legs slightly and feel for the lowest bony prominence. Then lower the leg to a sitting position. Next, turn the air valve counterclockwise to let air out while keeping your hand under the individual's lowest bony prominence. Release the air until you can barely move your fingertips, no more than 1 inch, 2.5 centimeters, and no less than half an inch, 1.5 centimeters. Turn the air valve clockwise to close and stop the flow of air. Please note the air will be released first from the quadrant that contains the air valve. Remember, the air must travel through the isoflow memory control, so you will do this in increments closing the valve and giving the air in the cushion time to equalize to avoid letting too much air out of the cushion. Position the individual on the cushion in their desired posture and have them maintain this position while the air transfers through the isoflow memory control. Once the air transfer is complete, push the isoflow's red knob toward the left in the locked position. This will isolate the flow of air and provide a more stable sitting position. Recheck each compartment of the cushion to ensure proper inflation. Rojo recommends doing a hand check daily to ensure the cushion is properly inflated. If the suggested distance has changed and there is more or less air in the cushion, make adjustments as we just demonstrated. Now, let's talk about how to position someone with a flexible pelvic deformity while using the isoflow memory control. With the cushion properly adjusted, make sure the isoflow green knob is in the unlocked position. Next, manually correct the client's pelvis to the desired position. For example, if the client has a flexible left pelvic obliquity, meaning the left side of the pelvis is lower than the right side, either have the patient lean towards the right, or the caregiver can manually put downward pressure on the right hip until the desired position is achieved. The exact level of correction will vary with each individual. Once you have the individual in the desired position, lock the isoflow by pushing the red knob to the left into the locked position. Once you have finished, please remember to check the client's bony prominences again to double check that neither side is lower than the recommended half inch, 1.5 centimeters of space between the user and the bottom of the cushion. Now let's show you how to use the isoflow control to correct a posterior pelvic tilt.
Start with the steps for proper inflation, but for this type of correction, keep more air, approximately one inch or 2.5 centimeters under the pelvis. Have the caregiver lift both of the individual's knees to put more pressure on the pelvis. This forces air to the front of the cushion, creating a well for the pelvis and helps to block the pelvis from sliding forward. Recheck each compartment of the cushion to ensure proper inflation. Finally, if an individual has a fixed pelvic deformity, follow the steps for proper inflation. In order to capture the pelvic deformity, you must lock the isoflow by pushing the red knob to the left. This allows the cushion to adapt to a variety of pelvic positions. Always follow up with a hand check under the lowest bony prominence to ensure you have maintained at least half an inch, 1.5 centimeters of space between the individual and the bottom of the cushion. For more detailed information regarding the isoflow memory control with the Quattro Select cushions, please click on the product information section of this webpage or call customer service at 1-800-851-3449.